The Knicks are playing dominant basketball right now, and it's going completely under the radar. As this video is being recorded, the Knicks have the second highest win streak in the NBA, winning five games in a row. Right now, the Knicks are firing on all cylinders. After disappointing last year, Julius Randle is having an all-star level season, Jalen Brunson has proven to be an underrated free agency pickup, and RJ Barrett is starting to thrive after a brutal start to the season. But more importantly, the Knicks have regained their defensive identity from two seasons ago and have become one of the grittiest defensive teams over their win streak. Before the season started, I predicted that the Knicks would be a play-in tournament team at best, but right now, they're making a statement that they can be a legit playoff team. For starters, we gotta talk about Julius Randle's bounce back season. Back in 2021, Julius Randle carried the Knicks to the playoffs and not only made his first all-star team, but was all NBA team. The Knicks gave Randle a big extension and last year his play fell off a cliff, but this year, Randle has done a great job of redeeming himself. Through 28 games, he's averaging 22 points, 9 boards, and 3 assists per game on a very efficient 59% true shooting percentage. During Randle's first All-Star year, he dominated by hitting mid-range jumpers, but those same shots stopped falling last year. This season, he's adjusted by taking less mid-range shots and attacking the rim more, and his finishing this year has been excellent, shooting 65% within 5 feet of the basket. Randle's drives to the basket are also leading to him getting fouled more, and his free throw percentage is up from 75% last year to 80% this year. Another area of his game that's much improved is his deep ball. Despite shooting more threes compared to last season, Randall's three-point shooting has improved from 31% last year to 34% this year. And Randall's scoring ability also allows him to get his teammates involved, where he has the vision to find his open teammates when drawing extra defenders. Randall's efficient scoring and playmaking is helping the Knicks to become a winning team, and the way he's playing this year, he's making a great case to make his second All-Star team. But while Randall has been amazing, Jalen Brunson has truly been the Knicks' best player this season, averaging 20 points and 6 assists per game. The crazy thing about Brunson is that he's a pretty small player at just 6 feet tall, and he's not even athletic either, but he's still an absolute bucket. He's got a really nice handle and he's very shifty, so he can get in the paint at will where he's a terrific finisher. But it's also his footwork, pivot moves, fadeaways, and mid-range game that makes him deadly. He's a terrific scorer, but it's also his playmaking that's a huge benefit to the Knicks. He's a high basketball IQ player, and he's great at getting his teammates involved, whether it's finding guys in transition, driving kicks, or facilitating out of the pick and roll. Brunson is also a legit closer for the Knicks, very capable of hitting big shots for the Knicks in crunch time and always looking to make the right play. A lot of casuals were quick to say the Knicks overpaid for Brunson when they saw the Knicks sign him to a $104 million contract, but so far this year, he's unlocked the Knicks offense. Another big contributor to the Knicks recent success has been RJ Barrett. Over the last 10 games, RJ is averaging 20 points per game, and while his field goal percentage over that stretch is still a pedestrian 42%, he's shooting a much improved 35% from downtown and 80% from the free throw line. RJ struggled mightily to start the year. He just couldn't hit the side of a barn, but the catch and shoot three pointers that were bricking earlier in the year are finally starting to knock down. RJ also deserves credit for becoming a much better finisher at the rim this season, shooting a career-high 57% within 5 feet of the basket, and he's finally starting to knock down his free throws at a solid rate. The Knicks don't need RJ to be an all-star to be a winning team, but they do need him to be a reliable third option, and recently he's done just that. The biggest unsung hero of the Knicks, in my opinion, has been Mitchell Robinson. He doesn't put up big numbers, so his high level of play tends to go under the radar, but if you pay close attention, you see how he has a big impact. Just like RJ, Mitch has also picked it up recently. Over the last 10 games, he's averaging 9 points, 11 rebounds, 
and two blocks per game. Mitch doesn't score a ton of points, but his work on the offensive glass is a big part of the Knicks offense. Because of Mitch's work down low, the Knicks are often able to get extra possessions on offense, and Mitch is also able to turn a lot of these offensive boards into the occasional putback. And along with the work that he does on the glass, Mitch also does a great job of anchoring the Knicks defense. He's a terrific rim protector where his size, length, and great timing make him tough for driving players to finish over. Overall, Brunson, RJ, and Randall are the biggest factors of the Knicks' success, but they wouldn't be where they're at right now without the tough play of Mitchell Robinson. And the last player to fill out the Knicks' starting lineup is Quentin Grimes, who's the definition of a glue guy. He's only averaging 7 points per game, but the Knicks simply would not be winning without his tough defense and hot shooting every night. Night in and night out, Grimes regularly defends the other team's best perimeter player, and he does a fantastic job. He's got good size at 6'5 with a 6'8 wingspan, and his lateral quickness helps him to stay in front of some fast players. And his three ball is finally starting to come around after a rough start, which is improving the Knicks' spacing. With how valuable Grimes is as a 3 and D player, we could see why the Knicks front office was so hesitant to put him on the table during Donovan Mitchell trade talks with the Jazz. But while Quentin Grimes has been playing great on the defensive end, we also have to give credit to both Emmanuel Quickly and Miles McBride because their work on the defensive end has really helped to turn this team around. Not too long ago, Thibodeau took defensive liabilities like Derrick Rose and Evan Fournier out the rotation while playing McBride and Emmanuel quickly heavier minutes, and since that executive decision was made, the Knicks as a team has been defending their asses off. In fact, over their five game win streak, they ranked number one in the entire NBA in defensive rating. The defensive trio of Grimes, Quickly, and McBride has given the Knicks' perimeter defense a huge boost. The Knicks aren't giving up as much dribble penetration, which is leading to less defensive breakdowns and less open three-pointers for opponents. While the Knicks are a talented team with some guys that are really shooting the lights out recently, it's the rediscovery of their defensive identity that perhaps has been the biggest factor in the Knicks turning their season around. Overall, Knicks fans should be very excited because the Knicks are playing the best basketball they've played in a long time. The Knicks are still under the radar, but if they keep winning, they'll put the rest of the league on notice. As this is being recorded, the Knicks have the sixth seed in the East, but they could still climb up the standings as they're only a game and a half from fourth and two and a half from third. It's a long season and there's still a lot of games left, but if the Knicks could keep defending like this, and Brunson and Randall keep up this high level of play, we may see the Knicks return to the playoffs. But now I want to hear from you guys. Do you think the Knicks can make the playoffs this season? Let me know in the comments. Guys, I'm trying to get up to 12,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so please, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it and hit that subscribe button, and click this video for a more in-depth analysis of Jalen Brunson's impact on the Knicks.